I just had the opportunity to get the latest briefing from uh, FBI Director Comey, as well as uh, Deputy Attorney General Yates and the rest of my national security team uh, about the tragedy uh, that took place in Orlando. Uh, they're going to be doing a more extensive briefing uh, around noon, uh, this a little bit after noon uh, over at FBI headquarters, so I will allow them to go into all the details, but I thought it was important for you to hear directly from me. Uh, first of all, uh, our hearts go out to the families uh, of those who've been killed. Uh, our prayers go to those who've been wounded. Uh, this is a devastating attack on all Americans. It is one that uh, is particularly painful for the people of Orlando, uh, but I think we all recognize that this could have happened uh, anywhere uh, in this country, and uh, we feel enormous solidarity uh, and grief uh, on behalf of the families that have been affected. The fact that uh, it took place at a club frequented by uh, the LGBT community, I think, uh, is also relevant. Uh, we're still looking at all the motivations of the killer, uh, but it's a reminder that uh, regardless of race, religion, faith, uh, or sexual orientation, uh, we're all Americans, and uh, we need to be uh, looking after each other and uh, protecting each other uh, at all times in the face of this kind of uh, terrible act. With respect to the killer, there's been a lot of reporting that's been done it's important to emphasize that we're still uh, at the preliminary stages of the investigation, and there's a lot more that we have to learn. Uh, the one thing that we can say is that this is being treated as a uh, terrorist investigation. It appears that the shooter uh, was inspired by uh, various extremist uh, information uh, that was disseminated over the internet. Uh, all those materials are currently being searched, exploited, so we will have a better sense of the pathway uh, that the killer took uh, in uh, making a decision to uh, launch this attack. Uh, as Director Comey, uh, I think, will indicate, at this stage we see no <coughs> clear evidence that he was directed externally. Uh, it does appear that uh, at the last minute, he announced allegiance to uh, ISIL. But there is no evidence so far that he was, in fact, directed by ISIL. And there also, at this stage, is no direct evidence that he was part of a larger plot. Uh, in that sense, it is, appears to be similar to what we saw in San Bernardino, but we don't yet know. Uh, and this is uh, part of what uh, is going to be important in terms of the investigation. As far as we can tell right now, this is certainly an example of the kind of homegrown uh, extremism that all of us have been so concerned about uh, for a very long time. Uh, it also appears that uh, he was able to obtain these weapons legally because he did not have uh, a criminal record that uh, in some ways would prohibit him from purchasing these weapons. It appears that one of those weapons he was able to just carry out of the store, uh, a, uh, an assault rifle, uh, a handgun, a Glock, which had uh, a lot of clips in it. He was apparently uh, required to wait for three days uh, under Florida law. Um, but it does indicate the degree to which it was not difficult for him to obtain uh, these kinds of weapons. Um, Director Comey will discuss the fact that uh, there had been some uh, investigation of him in the past that was triggered, but uh, as Director Comey, I think, will indicate, uh, the FBI followed the procedures that they were supposed to and, and did a, a proper job. Um, at the end of the day, uh, this is uh, something that we are going to have to grapple with making sure that even as we go after ISIL uh, and other extremist organizations overseas, even as we hit their leadership, even as we go after their infrastructure, even as we take uh, you know, K-12 
key personnel off the field, even as we disrupt external plots, that one of the biggest challenges we are going to have is this kind of uh, propaganda and perversions uh, of Islam that you see uh, generated on the internet, uh, and the capacity for that to uh, seep into the minds of uh, troubled individuals uh, or weak individuals. and seeing them motivated then to take actions against uh, people here in the United States and elsewhere in the world uh, that are tragic. Uh, and so countering this extremist ideology uh, is increasingly going to be uh, just as important as making sure that uh, we are disrupting uh, more extensive plots uh, engineered from the outside. We are also going to have to make sure that we think about the risks we are willing to take by being uh, so lax uh, in how uh, we make very powerful firearms available uh, to people in this country. Uh, and this is something that obviously I've talked about for a very long time. Um, you know, my, my concern is that we start getting into a debate, as has happened in the past, uh, which is an either-or debate. And the suggestion is either we think about something as terrorism and we ignore uh, the problems with easy access to firearms, uh, or it's all about firearms and we ignore uh, the role, the very real role that organizations like ISIL had in generating uh, extremist views inside this country. It, it's not an either or, it's a both and. Uh, we have to go after these terrorist organizations and hit them hard. We have to counter extremism. But we also have to make sure that it is not easy for somebody uh, who decides they want to harm uh, people in this country uh, to be able to obtain weapons uh, to get out. Uh, and and you know, I, my hope is, is that uh, over the next days and weeks that we are uh, being sober about how we approach this problem, that we let the facts get determined by uh, our investigators, uh, but we also do some reflection in terms of how we can best uh, tackle what is going to be a, a very challenging problem, not just here in this country, but around the world. Um, again, my final point is just to uh, you know, extend our deepest sympathies to the families of those who are affected and uh, to send our prayers to those who uh, are surviving hospitals right now, their family members uh, hoping uh, that they get better uh, very soon. But uh, in the meantime, you can anticipate uh, sometime around noon that uh, Director Comey and uh, uh, Deputy Attorney General uh, Yates will provide you with a, a more full briefing about this. Okay? Mr. President, is there anything more on the LGBT angle to this? Well, I, uh, I think we don't yet know the motivations, but here's what we do know is uh, organizations like ISIL or organizations like, like Al-Qaeda uh, or uh, those who have perverted Islam and created these uh, radical, nihilistic, vicious organizations, uh, one of the groups that they target are gays and lesbians because they believe that they do not uh, abide by their uh, attitudes towards sexuality. Now, we also know these are organizations that think it's fine to uh, take captive women uh, and enslave them uh, and rape them. So uh, there clearly are connections between uh, the, the attitudes of an organization like this and their attitudes towards uh, tolerance and pluralism and uh, a belief that all people are treated equally regardless of sexual orientation. That is something threatening to them. Women being empowered is threatening to them. Uh, so yes, I'm sure that they're, they're we will find that there are connections uh, regardless of the particular motivations of this uh, killer. There are connections between this uh, vicious, bankrupt ideology and uh, 
general attitudes of, uh, towards uh, gays and lesbians. And, um, and, and unfortunately, that is, that's something that the LGBT community is, is, is uh, subject to, uh, not just by ISIL, but by uh, a lot of uh, groups that purport to speak on behalf of God uh, around the world. What are your thoughts about the fact that after all of these incidents over these years, that there has not been any move to reform gun control in this country? Uh, uh, April, I think you know what I think about it. Uh, the, the fact that we make it this challenging for law enforcement, for example, even to get uh, To, to, to get alerted that somebody who they are watching has purchased a gun. Um, and if they do get alerted, sometimes it's hard for them to stop them from getting a gun. is is crazy. It's a problem. And we, we have to, uh, I think, do some soul searching. Uh, but again, you know, the danger here is, is that then it ends up being a the usual political debate, and the NRA and the gun control folks say that, oh, uh, Obama doesn't want to talk about terrorism. And if, if you talk about terrorism, then people say, why aren't you looking at uh, issues of gun control? The, the point is, is that if we have self-radicalized individuals in this country, um, then they are going to be uh, uh, very difficult, oftentimes, to find ahead of time. And how easy it is for them to obtain weapons uh, is, in some cases, going to make a difference as to whether they're able to carry out attacks like this or not. Um, and and uh, we make it very easy for uh, individuals who are troubled or disturbed or want to engage in violent acts to get very powerful weapons uh, very quickly. And, and that's a problem. It's a problem regardless of their motivations. It's a problem for uh, a young man who can walk into a church in South Carolina and uh, murder nine people who offered to pray with him. It, it's a problem um, you know, when a, a, an angry young man on a college campus decides to to shoot people because he feels disrespected. It's certainly a problem when we have organizations like ISIL or Al-Qaeda who are actively trying to promote violence uh, and are doing so very effectively over the internet. Uh, because we know that at some point there are going to be, out of 300 million people, there are going to be some individuals who uh, find, uh, for whatever reason, that kind of uh, horrible propaganda uh, enticing. And if, if that happens and that person can get a weapon, that's a problem.